like to talk a little bit more in depth about the star Sirius. Um, I've been asked what is the influence of Sirius on our planet and how important is Sirius. And I would have to say very. Because from Sirius came uh, impulses which have really shaped modern day society and also ancient society. Because from Sirius comes the concept of law. And law is very much um, a regularity. It helps us to create models of the cosmos, models of behavior. It helps us to create, to structure behavior, to make things predictable. And uh, it really also goes together with the, the Gabriel age, where a lot of yeah, knowledge about the cosmos, about spirituality, about the nature of our beings, was being revealed to us by higher powers and uh, by this revelation was then codified uh, into laws, into structures, into cosmologies, into philosophies and besides these spiritual laws we also started to uh, discover laws of physics, mathematical laws, laws of logic. So yes, the star Sirius has had a tremendous influence on us. Um, one of the reasons though that uh, that influence um, is now struggling to maintain its dominance is also that we've moved from the Gabriel age into um, the age of uh, the Archangel Michael. And it is no longer about um, hierarchy, about being told by a higher power how things should be uh, by in a way almost a slave-like obedience which we should have to the law, to the wills of beings in higher castes or in higher layers of consciousness. We are now being asked, challenged, to elevate ourselves rather than being a good little worker drone um, or worker ant or worker bee. We are now being asked, you can work on yourself, you can become a queen bee yourself, you can develop your own inner divine spark. You can develop your divine light. And this is the new, yeah, you could say, type of development which is being offered to us. And unfortunately, sometimes this personal development can bump heads with, yeah, the uh, existing uh, caste structure and legal structure and normative structure or moral structures. Because ultimately, if you have self-governance, um, you are the one who, in a way, defines your own laws. And of course, you can define laws for yourself and thereby structure yourself. But then, in a way, your structure is also a representation of your inner nature, as it should be. Now, we have laws which come from other sources and our beings, our structures, are not reflections of our own spirits. They are actually reflecting our leaders. We are how our leaders want us to be, how our leaders make us to be, with their laws, with the media, with the propaganda, with the brainwashing, with the education, with the books, with everything. So, ultimately, to really move into the Michael age, we need freedom of information. We need yeah, freedom from law, from power, from tyranny, from oppression. So the influence of Sirius is in a way struggling at this time because it is also, it gave us much, but it's also now supporting um, the very things which are holding us back, namely the, the elite. Um, so the elite on this planet, they of course want to yeah, keep their dominance and this dominance can be very much a beneficial thing. I'm not saying it's always a negative thing, but ultimately even beneficial guidance, beneficial leadership is something of the past. Um, the time that yeah, there is a person who will um, dictate laws for everybody, for the whole nation, is of the past. We have developed our individuality and that means that we have an individual path, not so much a collective path anymore. And for an individual path you need individual laws. You need to find 
your own structure. And of course you can look at other structures, you can be inspired by other structures and ultimately whatever structure you create will have to be within the envelope of karma and within the envelope of the unchangeable laws which are spiritual and which are uh, also the laws of physics and logic and mathematics. But the societal laws, they should be in a way emergent uh, from, from us rather than imposed from the top as has been done before. And ideally those laws will be a reflection of spiritual laws, of spiritual knowledge, um, of higher principles. But not everybody is equally able to do that and so we will have very different legal systems based on different principles or in different parts of the cosmos which we are listening to. So ultimately people will also tend to group and cluster together because similar energies will look for similar energies and they also benefit from living in a similar structure which will support and stimulate their own growth and development. So we will still be forming communities even though we individualize. Um, and those communities will develop their own standards, will develop their own laws. But there will be a lot more variance and it won't be as centralized. Um, so the influence of Sirius is very much waning or changing, you could say, compared to how it has been over the past thousands of years. Um, on the light side, there's not so much of an issue. Uh, because there's also people from the light side who are contacting um, uh, Sirius and trying to gain inspiration from that. But the people who work there with the light side of, of Sirius, they do that from the perspective of the Arimanic cosmos. So they see themselves as beings of power, of uh, uh, who are superior, and they see themselves as having a duty towards the inferior beings, to guide them, to protect them, to take care of them. So ultimately, it is a very fascist system. And um, the darker side of this fascist system is unfortunately much more present, much more dominant. Um, so there are also people who also consider themselves to be greater or superior, and who also desire power, but they tend to do it in a rather negative way. They tend to focus on a very selective group, so they tend to be nationalist or racist or um, uh, religious. And they are not so inclusive, they are not trying to benefit all conscious beings on this planet. Um, they are just seeking mastery and also often maintain, uh, maintaining their mastery, their position uh, of lordship over nature, over other humans over their country, over their religion, over their culture. And um, from this negative fascism, uh, there's a lot of interest in, in working with Sirius because it gives them knowledge, power, structures, uh, which they can work with. So I would say the impulse of Sirius itself is just the impulse of law, but it's been it's in modern day utilized more negatively than positively. If we look at the alien influence which is connected to Sirius, we find it is mainly insectoid. Um, there have been some, um, uh, well, lots of talks about different types of aliens which are influencing development on our world and world politics. And one of the big discrepancies I notice is there is a lot in the yeah, media and in conspiracy theories about reptilians. How reptilians are evil, how they are controlling us, how they are somehow not good. Um, but I would point out that actually all our spiritual powers we have as humans um, they are here because of reptilian influence. Because humans were not very spiritual beings in the past. Um, there were aliens which 
yeah, were from a ruling caste or a ruling elite, and they had more power. But yeah, power is not necessarily insight; is not necessarily sensitivity. And most of the talents we have, of being able to sense other people's emotions, to read other people's thoughts, uh, to see the future, to be clairvoyant, to see energies, to feel energies, to hear voices, and um, uh, also to cooperate with uh, natures which are of a very different nature and the, the very basic ability of working with plant medicine, with working with animal medicine, with working with animal spirits together. These were in a way yeah, created in our race by reptilians. They saw the limitations of the human form. They do not have these limitations themselves and they wanted to improve the human race by giving us spiritual power, by giving us spiritual abilities, hoping that this would also attract a higher type of spirit to incarnate in human bodies. So that is something very important to realize if you're talking about reptilians. Reptilians are the ones who created human spirituality and who are also trying to guide the development of human spirituality. And this is also the reason why uh, there are tales of dragons, both in Western culture and in Oriental culture. And the Oriental culture is much more correct, that they are the guardians who have been posted on our earth to watch that our development uh, goes according to the plan of the gods. So are they in a position of dominance? Yes. Are they in a position of rulership? Yes. But they do so, so that ultimately we can follow the path which the gods have set for us to develop our skills and powers with the gods as our teachers and our masters. So now let's talk about what is actually the dominant influence, because even though these reptilians and the dragons have great power, they are not the dominant influence on the earth. The insectoids are the dominant influence. If you look at the government, they are mainly either by people of an insectoid nature or influenced by spirits of an insectoid nature. And these insectoids, they have a very mechanistic view of society. Um, they don't respect or uh, understand even individuality very well. Uh, they work along ideals, on principles, plans, and the plan is more important than the person. Uh, the persons are just part of the plan, or they are being the subject which is worked upon. Um, so um, it is very much a, a top-down uh, type of leadership, um, where yeah, plans are made, laws are made, which are yeah, fought to benefit uh, society and or economy, which is in a way a meta plan. It's a plan working upon a plan, another plan, a system working upon a system. But in a way, the humanity, the care, uh, the feeling uh, is not codified into those plans, into that mental machinery of uh, which is striving towards perfection. And there is a great battle between these insectoids, which are, you could say, logical and mental in nature, um, and the reptilians, which are more, um, you could say, spiritual in nature. And, well, it's obvious, if you look at current society, that the insectoids are the dominant factor and are also the winning factor. Um, because the demands which actually the plan puts upon people like you have to check your Facebook every day, you have to check your emails every day, you have to fill in forms, you have to do your taxes, you have to have your insurance. So um, the plans are more and more taking our attention, taking our focus, taking our time, and we are feeding them and sustaining them with our life force, with our energy, with our attention. and. 
if you look at how much energy we're actually spending on our spiritual development and listening to the God and to the deities and to our spiritual teachers, this is a decreasing and diminishing amount. Um, so there is indeed very much a struggle for the control of our planet, for the control of humanity. And indeed, as many people say, the power is being taken away from the reptilians. This is true. But instead of taking the power back for more or less the native humans, we're giving it to the insectoids instead. So we're changing one master to another master. And I think we're actually changing masters in a, in a poor way. Yes, we're in the middle of a revolution, but I think that the new dictators are actually worse than the old dictators. Ultimately, we should evolve into a level where we can guide ourselves, but I think that might be quite several hundred years off. Uh, so I don't think we are quite ready yet to be completely without guidance, without leaders. Um, but I'm not agreeing with the, with the current change of leadership which is happening and also with the current usage of uh, the serious impulse by mainly these insectoid aliens. Okay, I hope this gives you some answers as to the influence of the star series.